Adjusting attention on any serger can be quite daunting, but with a few basic understandings and with your threads color coded like they are for me as I'm showing you this, the Singer Pro Finish serger will actually allow you to adjust tension as needed for different types of fabric, different kinds of thread, and different kinds of serger stitches, which we will be kind of showing you throughout all of these videos. Remember, you can find all the videos on this machine. There's links below this YouTube video where they all hang out together. So having them color coded definitely helps you first identify where each of the stitches are. With quality thread that we have talked about in the serger is also gonna make a difference. So quality thread means that you can look at the thread and it's nice and smooth, it's not fuzzy, and it's not different thicknesses. Like sometimes serger thread, or what they call serger thread, it's like you look at it and it's like thin and then thick, and thin and thick. Well keep in mind, as that runs through the tension, it's gotta kinda go open and close as those thin and thick areas wiggle through it. So that means tension can kind of wiggle around on your uh, fabric. It might not look as balanced. The other thing that does play into part is actually the cutting width. And as we talk about cutting width, um, we do play, make sure we talk about it when we talk tension, because sometimes it's not tension that needs to be adjusted, but how much fabric is cut off or maybe not as much. So that can actually kind of make tensions look a little different, and we will definitely need you to kind of understand the, the re ratio between the two. So let's just go ahead. I've got all my tensions pretty much at three here. I got one a little bit uh, higher, but let's just put it all at three and then go ahead and stitch. So first off, I've got my blue and my green thread are in my needle. So there's two rows of stitches kind of coming down parallel together. The pink thread is my upper looper. So as it goes back and forth, it meets with the yellow one that goes back and forth on the underneath side. Those two should line up or link along the edge of the fabric. So if you have, and we'll have to kind of adjust this um, unnecessarily, so let's do this. Let's tighten the pink one. So next, what's gonna happen is this pink one's gonna come and curl to the front a little bit more than what it did. Maybe I'll give it a little bit more just to let it kind of do its job. I also have this stitch length a little long. I'm gonna shorten that back up to where it should. Oh yeah, no, we're already seeing it. So you can kind of see it looks a little bit messier along the edge as it's trying to pull that yellow thread from the backside over, but we tightened it. So what are we doing? We're playing tug of war. So as we tighten that top one, it is pulling the bottom one around. So vice versa, if we loosen that one, we can see that the yellow one is now going to be uh, pulling it to the backside because that's the stronger one. And a little bit, actually doesn't look too bad, but that definitely makes a difference. So if you're finding that your loopers are not meeting along the edge, some, you can actually take and you could tighten one and loosen another, or you can do opposite. So usually I like to do a little of both if they're kind of need a little finesse to come right where they need to be. Now let's talk needles just a little bit. So when you flip it over, what you wanna see is a nice straight line where the lower looper comes along the edge of your fabric. When it's straight, that's when you have a nice tight seam for that construction seam. If you don't see a straight line right here, then you will probably have some little bit of loops. And then when you open it, you have big gaps <laughs> at the edge where your seam should actually be. So let's actually simulate that just a little bit. We're gonna loosen our needle threads and I'll show you what we're gonna see. All right, so it still looks fine on the front. But on the back, oh, look what you're seeing. So this is my blue thread. It has loosened up. And now when we open this, you're gonna see a lot more, what I call it, smiling at you as it opens up. That is definitely not a well-made construction seam. So most of the time, uh, we do find that if we tighten up our needle threads, obviously we had to loosen them to even get that scenario. But if for any reason the thread is not placed in the tension area when you are threading it, then you'll have even bigger loops. And so it definitely just needs to be flossed 
into the tension disc. So if you look right in here and you see blue thread just kind of laying outside where it should be, that's where that flossing comes in. But once you have flossed it, then you can actually adjust tensions if you need. So if you can't figure out what's going on, don't forget, clip all your threads, re-thread the machine. Of course, sometimes it's like you missing one of the guides down here. So if a guide is not threaded, there's a reason those guides are there. Make sure that each guide is threaded and that it's not wrapped around it accidentally maybe twice and that each one is in the proper guide. Make sure you've changed your needle. So sometimes where people think tension is an issue, it could be something else. Now let's just talk about that knife just a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and move this knife all the way in. So as I turn it away from me towards the machine, that knife is coming closer to the needle. So let's just stitch real quick here and notice what we're seeing. So it's actually giving us a prettier stitch because there's less fabric being um, put inside this overlock. Now this fabric is a little bit thicker, so it's a little fluffier, so it kind of fills in nicely. But on thinner fabric, like two pieces of cotton, you might find that the stitches look like they're hanging off the edge. So I'd like you to try stitching with your knife all the way away from the needles and then all the way in towards the needles and then to find where the seam actually looks the best in between those two settings. So tension, knife adjustment, stitch length, quality thread. Have you changed your needles lately? And has the machine been serviced lately? So there is a time where nothing you do will make it better and it's probably time for just a good old tune-up at your local soy machine store.